Automation Direct loves creating the annual FIRST Robotics Competition game animation. We get questions about the process, so let's take a peek behind the curtain and see how it all comes together. We usually start in August before kickoff, brainstorming with FIRST, giving us a general idea of the game concept. I say general idea because the final details are usually still evolving at this point. Next we have to create robot concepts that address the key actions of the challenge. We'll usually create a chart and rough robot sketches like these from 2017 to make sure the robots address all of the scoring, gathering and endgame options without actually designing any real mechanisms or showing a real robot. We'll then scour the internet for thematic and artistic references for inspiration and then hand that off to the animation team to do their magic. That paddle bot looked like this in the final animation for gathering fuel, scoring in a low goal and climbing in the endgame. Given an understanding of the game and the robot requirements, we then create a script and a crude storyboard that touches on all the key elements and scenes of the animation. This is the storyboard from 2019. You can see it's just a bunch of crude graphics and stick figures walking through the various scenes. Over the next month or so, the storyboard will typically go through dozens of iterations between us and FIRST until we all agree on every element and most importantly, we agree on the voiceover. The voiceover is key because it sets the cadence of the animation. It's what the animators use to time every aspect of the entire project. Sometimes we use that voiceover directly, which is the same voice that you're hearing right now. And sometimes we overdub it with other talent to provide a more dynamic feel, like this 2017 Steamworks voiceover by Professor Elemental. Jolly good luck, all you robo steampunkers. I can't wait to see your brilliant solutions. Or the 2020 and 2021 voiceover by first alumni Eric Lawrence. Welcome to the 2020 First Robotics Competition. While the storyboard is being refined, the animators take the CAD files of the actual field and remodel and texture them for the animation, which includes subtleties like shadows and even robot tracks in the carpet. Now this is a bit of a challenge because we never see the real field. FIRST doesn't actually build the very first field until after we finished modeling the animation field. So we have to do all of this blind. That's right, what you see in the game animation was created without ever seeing a real field. For example, if you look close at this shield generator from 2020, you can see where our guess was close, but not exactly the same as the real thing. This is further complicated by the fact that the CAD files aren't usually finalized until around December, long after we've created our version of the field. So it really is amazing that it looks as close to the real thing as it does. The animators also create human players while we're working on a storyboard. We try to incorporate the game theme into the human players each year, but sometimes we completely miss the point. In 2018, for example, the theme was supposed to be a retro 8-bit arcade style graphics. So we presented these human players which were based on the 1980s arcade game Tron. That was rejected in favor of something with lower resolution, more in line with the game concept. Of course, you may recognize those human players because we repurposed them for the 2019 game. So now we have a solid storyboard, final voiceover which cannot change from this point forward because it sets the cadence for the entire animation, the field modeled, the robots modeled and the human players modeled. It's time to bring it all together and animate frame by frame all of the movement and action outlined in the storyboard. This is incredibly tedious. It typically takes a couple months and about 2500 CPU hours of render time. 2500 hours? That's 3 to 4 months of render time. That can't be right, can it? Well, yeah, it is right for a single CPU, but we built a server farm just for things like this so we can distribute the load across many high-end PCs, which reduces the render time to a week or two. For the first pass. There is always errors and issues so each scene usually requires multiple passes. The game animation requires a lot of computer horsepower. Last year, however, we started using a newer rendering technology which is a lot faster and massively expedites that process. Where we used to have to render through Christmas and New Year's just to meet the kickoff deadline, now we can wrap things up before the holidays. It's really nice not having to work on the game animation Christmas Day, which we did do for the first couple of years. After the animation is rendered, we then add background music, 
sound effects, and scoring details. Now that's important. If you listen carefully, the scoring is never mentioned in the voiceover. It only appears as a graphic overlay. That's because the voiceover is one of the first things we have to do, while the scoring details aren't finalized until much later. One of the very last things we do is add the intro. We like to find fun ways to introduce the animation, but we put that off till last just in case we run out of time and have to do something quick. This intro from 2016 actually modeled the real camera that took this shot of the real field. We then viewed the animation through that virtual model camera so we could get a one-to-one -one match and perfectly synchronize the transition between the real field and the animated one. Now we would be remiss if we didn't mention the huge impact Dave Lavery had on all of this. He single-handedly created the game animation for 12 years by himself. Dave did an amazing job of conveying the game concept with simple, to the point, concise animations. Dave's work is near and dear to our hearts because it was his animations along with the original animation contest sponsored by Autodesk that helped inspire AutomationDirect's lead animator to go into animation. He started FRC Team 1746 but ended up never touching a robot. He got hooked on animation and never looked back. He now works here at AutomationDirect creating animated promos for our products and he has an online presence where he teaches others how to create animated graphics to use in their own live streams. So from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank Dave Lavery for his pioneering work on creating the first robotics game animation, inspiring our lead animator to get into animation, and creating this opportunity for AutomationDirect. AutomationDirect also uses the game animation assets to create images for the formal game manual, the transitions you see at events that show who won the current match, the virtual reality simulation we produce each year, and a 3D printed scale model of the field. Our animation team also created the Alliance Selection animation you see at events. And of course, AutomationDirect now sponsors the annual Digital Animation Award to help inspire future animators. At AutomationDirect, we fundamentally appreciate that FIRST really is more than robots.